If you want to learn how to make a video game in Unity, this tutorial should help you get familiar with collisions. In the last video, we set all our 3D pipes to spawn infinitely in random heights and directions, all while moving towards our player. Now it's time to destroy our bird if it collides with an obstacle and add points for every collision the player can avoid. In Unity, the first thing we'll do is select a game object to take a look at some colliders. If we go down into the prefabs we created in the last video, let's double left click on our bottom pipe prefab. With our bottom pipe prefab open, we can see two game objects that make up our 3D pipe, the top and base. If we select the top game object, we can see in our list of components that it already has a capsule collider attached to it. This is one of the colliders responsible for pushing our bird backwards if our player flies into the top of our pipe. Capsule colliders work great for objects with rounded sides. Unity included this by default because we selected a cylinder to make the top of our pipe. To take a closer look, we can temporarily turn off our mesh renderer and only view the capsule collider. It's this green outline that you see here. Although these rounded sides are useful in games played in the first or third person, our game only plays from left to right. Even though our objects are 3D, the game is more like a 2D experience. To better visualize this, let's take a look at our object in the 2D view by clicking on this little 2D button up here in the top. If we zoom out a little, you can see the capsule collider juts out above the top of our pipe. The player could hit this and die even if they clear the pipe. You can probably imagine how frustrating that would be. So let's go ahead and remove this capsule collider by left clicking on these three little dots and going down to remove component. I'll left click on that. Now let's take a look at all the colliders Unity has by default. To do this, let's go down to the add component button, left click and type the word collider in this search bar. This filters out all available colliders in Unity. For our game, let's select box collider. So I'll left click to add that to our game object. If I come out of 2D mode and turn my mesh renderer back on so I can see the pipe again, you may notice that these corners jut out on the sides. This box collider doesn't exactly fit our pipe's rounded shape well, but because we only care about collisions on the left and top of our pipes, this actually works perfectly. If we go back to our 2D view, we can see our top is now smoothed out and flush with what the player would expect if they hit it. While we're here, let's make this same adjustment to our base object. So I'll left click on base, go to my capsule collider, remove it, come out of 2D mode. So to add a box collider to this game object, let's left click on add component again, left click on box collider, and it automatically fits. I'll switch back into 2D view one last time. I'll select the top and the base by holding shift. You can see this green outline is perfect. It's flush with the sides of our pipe. Great. Next, we need to tell Unity to do something other than just push our bird backwards if the player collides with one of our pipe obstacles. But before we get into any code, let's take a look at something. With our top game object selected again, you might have noticed there are a couple drop downs here right below the name field, one called tag, and one called layer. For this tutorial, we'll keep everything on the default layer, but let's change this tag. If I left click on this untag dropdown, you'll see that Unity includes a few tags by default. And at the very bottom, it gives us the option to add our own tags. Let's left click on that. To create a new tag, all we have to do is left click on this little plus sign and name it. And the name we'll give our tag is obstacle. Then click save. Now if we go to our top game object again and just left click to select it, we can go over to the tag dropdown and select our brand new obstacle tag that we just created. Let's go ahead and left click on that. Next, let's go into our base object and do the exact same thing. We'll go to our tag where it says untagged, I'll left click and select obstacle by left clicking on it. Great, now let's back out of our bottom pipe prefab to save it and select our top pipe prefab. Now with our top pipe, prefab selected, we can do the exact same steps a lot faster. If we hold shift and left click on the top and base objects, we can select both at the same time. Go over to our capsule colliders. Let's remove them by left clicking these three little dots and going to remove component, then go down to add component and left click on box collider. You'll see that both of them now have a box collider attached. And before we back out, let's go to this tag where it says untagged and select our obstacle tag that we created just a second ago and I'll back out to save it. Perfect, now let's put our new colliders and tags to use. To do this, let's create a new c -sharp script that determines what happens if our player collides with something. We'll name it Player Collide Manager. So I'll go down to my scripts, right click, go up to Create, and left click on c -sharp Script, and we'll name it Player Collide Manager. Just like that. While we're here, let's left click on our bird player 
and attach this player collide manager script to it by left clicking and dragging it right under our player movement script. Perfect. Next, let's open our player collide manager script by double left clicking on it down here in our project folder. Inside our new player collide manager script, I'll first clean up our usings by removing our system.collections and system.collections.generic namespaces, and I will remove the start and update methods as well. Next, let's make sure we click inside our player collide manager class, and I'll create a new method by typing void and then space, and then we'll type in on collision enter. Because onCollisionEnter is a special method in Unity, Visual Studio might recognize what you're doing and let you auto-complete the method. At this point, you can still type everything out, but pressing the Enter key will let you work a little faster. So with onCollisionEnter highlighted, I'll go ahead and hit the Enter button on my keyboard. Unlike the other methods we've seen so far, you might have noticed this method has a variable inside its parentheses. This is called a parameter. Parameters just allow methods to take in information whenever they're called. We've actually passed information into methods similar to this in our other scripts. For example, if I type debug.log and hover over the log here, you can see that the debug.log takes in an object parameter named message. Instead of object, the onCollisionEnter method takes in a collision parameter. This means that anytime Unity calls the onCollisionEnter method, it's required to include collision information. And you might have guessed, Unity's physics system automatically calls this method anytime two colliders attempt to enter one another. You may remember, our bird player game object included a sphere collider by default. To check if our bird player game object collided with an obstacle, let's create a new if statement. Now inside our if statements parentheses, let's take this collision variable by double left clicking on it and hitting Control or Command C on your keyboard and Control or Command V to paste it, then type dot game object. This is going to take our collision variable information and figure out which game object triggered the collision. Next, let's type dot compare tag. Then open and close parentheses. This will let us look up the tag assigned to the object we collided into. Inside these parentheses, we need to add quotation marks and type out the obstacle tag that we just created in Unity. Be sure to type it out exactly how we created it within Unity. Next, let's select our debug.log and hit controller command X to cut it and controller command V to paste it. Then inside the parentheses, let's add quotation marks and type the words game over. Before we head back into Unity, let's also destroy our bird so it's visually clear what just happened. To do that, just type the word destroy and then open close parentheses and end it with a semicolon. Inside these parentheses, we can get the game object that this player collide manager script is attached to by simply typing the word game object. In our case, we're destroying our player object. Finally, I'll just clean this up a bit by removing the space and hit controller command S to save my script. And then let's head back into Unity. Now, when we click play and test out our game, if we hit one of these pipes, our bird should be destroyed just like that. And you can see it's no longer in our hierarchy and in our console, it says game over. While we're still in Unity, we can increase the difficulty a bit by making our ground also kill the player. And all we have to do is left click to select the ground object we created in part one and go over and select the tag of obstacle. Now, if we click play one last time and just let our bird drop, you'll see it gets destroyed on impact. And then you can see this game over message appears in our console. Great, next let's create something to add points if we fly over or under a pipe without hitting it. To do this, we'll set up a collider to act as a trigger. I'll left click on our project again, go into our prefabs and left click on this bottom pipe prefab. I'm gonna exit out of 2D mode just so I can kind of see my scene a little better. And within my bottom pipe prefab here, I'm gonna right click and add a new empty game object. Let's be sure to reset the transform. Next, let's rename this to point collider. Now with our point collider selected, let's add a new box collider component. I'll left click on add component and I'll left click on box collider. If you don't see it here immediately, you can just search for collider again. So I'll left click on this. And although we don't have a mesh, we can still see the outline of our collider highlighted here in green. This basically means we're creating an invisible collider the player will never actually see. There are a few ways to adjust its size, but we'll just change the transform component. Let's first move it up by setting the Y position to positive 10. Perfect. Then let's change the Y scale to 20 to expand it out. If we left our collider like this, 
the player would slam into an invisible wall and not know what's happening. To prevent this, we actually need to go into our box collider and check this little is trigger box to true. Next, let's go back into our little tag dropdown here and create one more tag. Underneath our obstacle tag, we got this little plus sign. We can left click on this and let's call it point. Then I'll click save and select my point collider again, and then left click on my tag dropdown and left click on point to assign it to our point collider game object. And that's actually everything we need to set up our bottom pipe prefab. And an easy way to update our top pipe prefab from here is to select the point collider and hit control or command C to copy it and then back out. Next, I'll go into my top pipe collider, then right click on the top pipe parent object and go paste as child. So it's gonna paste what we have copied, which is that point collider here. Next, what we wanna do, because you can see our collider is actually inside the pipe right now, is where it has positive 10, simply go to the front and type negative 10. So it'll be coming out of the bottom of our pipe. Next, we need to create one more method in our player collide manager script. Inside our player collide manager script, let's go to the end of our on collision enter method and I'll space down a couple times. Then I'll type void, on trigger enter. If it pops up, go ahead and hit enter. If not, you can still type this out and it'll do the exact same thing. Similar to the on collision enter method we just made, Unity will call this method anytime our player hits a collider marked as a trigger. Next, to determine if we hit a point collider, let's create another if statement. Inside our if statement, let's grab our other variable name here and I'll hit control or command C to copy that. And then I'll left click inside these parentheses and hit control or command V to paste it. And we'll do the exact same thing we did up here. I'll actually copy it to speed things up. So I'll hit Control or Command C, Control or Command V. But instead of obstacle, let's type the tag name we just created, point. Again, remember to type out this point tag exactly as we created it in Unity. Now inside our if statement, let's copy this debug.log, Control or Command C on your keyboard, and then Control or Command V to paste it. Instead of the word game over, let's just type add point. Just like that. Soon we'll connect the trigger collisions to a point system and our obstacle collisions to a game over state. For now, let's just save our script and head back into Unity one last time. Back in Unity, you can see my top pipe prefab is still open. All we have to do is back out of that to get into our main scene. Now, if we click play one last time, we should see that every time we clear a pipe, the add point message pops up, there it goes. And if we slam into a pipe, the game over state will appear and our bird will be destroyed. But one other thing you may have noticed is our bird player can fly infinitely high, way off the map here. So to fix that, all we have to do is create one more empty game object. I'll right click here in my hierarchy, left click on create empty, and I'll just type it sky limit. With it selected, make sure to reset your transform and let's add a box collider. With everything now aligned correctly in our scene, all we have to do is change the width of our box collider and move it up a bit. The height I decided to use was 7.5. It just felt best to me. Feel free to play around with it however you want. And then finally, let's change the X scale to match our ground width of 50. You should see this green outline now matches the same width as our ground. Now, if I click play again and try to fly all the way to the top, you'll eventually hit an invisible wall that stops you from going off the screen. Perfect. All that's left in this series is a way to track our player's score and trigger a game over screen if our player collides with an obstacle. In the next video, we'll work with Unity's UI system to track all the pipes our player dodges and add points to a scoreboard. If you like this video, be sure to let me know by tapping that little thumbs up button below. It's totally free and helps me out a bunch. As always, please leave any comments or questions in the section down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.